Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech, and today I'm going to talk about Google Assistant for the iPad. Now, Google Assistant's been out for a while for iOS devices, and it's recently came to the iPad, which means it's optimized and ready to go, and it's a great addition to your iPad. So you're going to need to go into the App Store and download it. So go to the App Store, do a search for Google Assistant, and download it. Once you have it opened, you're gonna to need to use a Google account. I recommend using your personal Google account, uh, or of course, if you used Google Assistant with other devices, you'll wanna make sure to use the same account there. Uh, I found that using Google Assistant or using Google services like Google Assistant with your like Gmail account seems to work better than if you're using those tools with a G Suite or like Google Apps account. Um, the new features seem to come to Gmail before they come to Google Apps. Um, so let's go ahead and open that up. I already have my email address assigned, so I don't need to go into that. Um, but what are some of the things that you can do with uh, Google Assistant? Now, of course, Google Assistant is kind of a competitor with Siri. Uh, Siri does an okay job at you know basic tasks and stuff like that, but it often misses the mark, and Google Assistant is just much more intelligent than Siri is. I personally have had Google Home devices. I've also had an Apple HomePod, and so I kind of know what each of these devices are good at doing and some of the things that they're just not very good at doing. Uh, one of the things that I really like about Google Assistant, whether it being integrated with one of your devices like a tablet or a phone or even a Google Home device, is being able to kind of get your daily briefing or set up routines. Now, I want to do a whole video on routines, but typically when I come in in the morning to my office, I will ask it ask Google to play my um, my morning routine or essentially all I have to say is good morning to it and it's going to go ahead and play some of the latest news items uh, you know from sources that I like and basically it can go through an entire routine I mean I could even have it turn on lights I could have it set the thermostat to a certain temperature there are lots of things that I can have it do if I have those appropriate devices around so considering how cheap you can get a Google home type device, which I'll link to the couple of the ones that I use down in the description below, um, you're going to be able to configure and even use it, uh, use some of these devices from your iPad, even when you're not around one of the other smart devices. Um, so in setting up your briefing, you can do that from your iPad. You simply have to tap on this icon in the top right hand corner and then tap on the little uh, icon here on the right and go into your settings. So under your settings, if you scroll down here, you can see routines, and I'm gonna talk about routines. You can see my morning routine here. I have different things that I can check. I can have it um, even uh, uh, tell me about the weather, tell me about my commute, tell me what's on my calendar for that day, uh, and then play the news, and then I can click on the little gear icon and actually configure the news items that I want to have shown up. And what's really cool about that is that all I have to do is say good morning to it or good afternoon, or there's all of these different routines that you configure here. Uh, a configure for leaving home, a configure or a, a routine for I'm home or leaving for work or something like that. And uh, you can configure and make all these things changes especially like if you're on an Android device, you can have it silence your phone, like do all these cool things. Um, but if you're on an iPad, there are some things it's not gonna be able to do, like silence your iPad or turn the volume down on it or whatnot. There are things that just aren't really um, compatible because it's a Google service and it's an iOS device or an Apple device. Um, but being able to go in and do this, uh, these are things that are really awesome. And then all I have to do is, uh, is Tap on the microphone and say good morning. Hi, you found the new good morning routine. Let's try it together. First, here's some information to start your day. Currently in Modesto, it's 59 and cloudy. Today, it'll be rainy with a forecasted high of 59 and a low of 47. Next, I'll play the news. And just so you know, you can customize this routine. I can turn on lights, start coffee, play music or podcasts and more. To customize your good morning routine, check out routines. And so I can also system. tap on the X to stop that routine. Obviously, it's kind of explaining some of these things to me for the first time because this is the first time that I've used them on my iPad. 
but I've used them on my iPhone. I've used them on my uh, Android devices for quite some time and most definitely my Google Home devices. So it's really cool because it just plays through all of these things. These routines are something you can't set up in Siri very well. You can have it play some news. You can have it like decide, you can tell it to start with something next time, but you can't have it go down a list. You can't customize it very well. And that's where I really like using uh, Google Assistant on, um, uh, on the iPad because now I can use it on all of my devices. Uh, so the next thing that I think is extremely useful is just, this is something you can do, of course, with Siri, but creating a shopping list or creating some sort of a list. Uh, I can have it rem remember specific things. Uh, for example, I can start a shopping list by uh, just simply talking to it. So I tap on the microphone and then start talking. Add milk, eggs, and peanut butter to my shopping list. Okay, I've added milk, eggs, and peanut butter to your shopping list. Now all I have to do is tap show me my shopping list and it's got my shopping list. I can go ahead and check that out. There's my list right there. I can add things manually to it or I can even hit done and then I'll go and add some more things. So let's see, uh, add beer, bottled water, and Pepsi to my shopping list. Okay, I've added beer, bottled water, and Pepsi to your shopping list. So let's hit show me my shopping list. Here you go. And there's that shopping list. It's added the items to it. It's fantastic. Uh, I can even create lists for other things, uh, not just shopping. You know, maybe you need to, you want to create a task list for the day. Um, there, maybe you want to just create a list of things that you know you need to do the next uh, uh, day or schedule some things. Uh, just to check off. I mean, it's really amazing. You can just do this straight from Google Assistant. And of course, that list now is available on my other mobile devices as well. So I can go over to say my iPhone or, well, let's just do it on my iPhone. I'm gonna open up Google Assistant and say, uh, show me my shopping list. Show me my, nope. Show me my shopping list. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the same exact shopping list that I just created on my iPad and I didn't have to do anything other than just open Google Assistant and tell it to uh, to tell me that to show that list. Another thing is to uh, is to get your photos. I mean, if you use Google Photos to back up your photos, which I highly recommend, um, Google Photos is another app you can download to your iPad or your iPhone. Your, it probably came on your Android device. Uh, and then just have it automatically back up all your photos there. So I can go here now and I can ask it to show me photos of something. Like I have some photos of my, my drones when I fly them. So I can ask it to show me photos of my drones. Show me my drone photos. This is what I found in your Google Photos. So there we go. And then it gives me some other suggestions. So I could say, uh, show me some of my photos from Christmas. Show me photos from Christmas. Take a look at these pictures from your Google Photos. There we go. I mean, this is fantastic uh, that it does this. And then I can tap on one of these photos uh, and then it opens up that photo big and I can see it. I think this is just amazing that you can do all of this from Google Assistant. Um, so of course there are things that I can do. I can go straight into Google Photos. It's going to open up the Google Photos app and show me more of those photos. I can ask for a specific person, like show me photos of my wife or show me photos of one of my kids by name. It's really amazing on how it's able to do all of this because I use the Google Photos app and I've told Google Photos who each person is. And so it's going to show me the photos of those people. Another great thing is to actually launch navigation. This might be a little more useful on your phone than it is on an iPad, but if you use your iPad in your vehicle for navigation, which I know some people do, and I have done in the past because it's a nice big screen, um, you could definitely launch navigation extremely easy from your iPad. So all I would have to do is tap on that microphone and then ask it to navigate somewhere. So for example, I can say, navigate to Safeway. All right, Safeway, let's go. So it's gonna just show me right there. It's gonna ask me which app I wanna launch that in because I have three different Maps apps on this device. 
Typically, I would want to use Google Maps because I just like Google Maps better. So I can uncheck, ask me which app to use every time, and then tap on Google Maps, and it's going to go ahead and open that up and give me navigation directions on how to get there, which I think is fantastic. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, like, is there an easier way to get to uh, Google Assistant rather than having to tap on the app and then tap on the microphone or whatnot? Yes, there most definitely is, and it's using the widget area uh, when you swipe down. So typically when you swipe down, you would get your notifications. If you swipe over to the side, you can add widgets. Um, so widgets are an easy way to get to information. So there's a widget that you can add by going to the bottom, tapping on edit, and then hitting the plus to add the Google Assistant widget. And then I've moved it all the way up to the top, then hit done. So now that assistant widget is there and all I have to do is tap on it and it's gonna enable the microphone right away. So let's check this out. Show me my photos of Liam. This is what I found in your Google Photos. So easily I can tap, it automatically enables the microphone and I'm ready to ask Google Assistant something. Of course, we don't have any special buttons or features that the iPad has that's gonna launch this immediately, but we can add it to the widget area and that makes it fast and easy to get to by just simply swiping down and tapping uh, talk to assistant. So that's how to use uh, Google Assistant on the iPad. I hope that it helped you understand and use Google Assistant a little better. I have some more videos planned for using Google Assistant. I really want to take a deep dive into routines. So make sure to click that subscribe button here on our YouTube channel so that you can be notified when we put out new videos. The routines one is going to be just awesome. It's kind of a game changer, especially if you want to get the most out of your devices, whether it even just be your, your tablet and your phone. But if you have a Google Home device or whatever, even if it's the little mini one that they sell for like 35 bucks, um, it's going to help you get the most out of that. So also check out the links in the description below. Like I said before, the Google Home devices and some of the accessories I use to make sure that I can use these things regardless of where I'm at in my home or office, I have down below so that you can check out and make sure to come back and check out State of Tech here on YouTube later because I'm going to be doing a lot more on how to use these uh, these assisted these assistant type devices and whatnot um, and give you some tips that make them extremely useful. So that's going to do it for today's video. Thanks a lot, and I hope to see you back here soon.